everyone in this video we'll discuss about gaucher's disease so what is gaucher's disease it is a kind of a lysosomal storage disease it is the most common lysosomal storage disease it is a autosomal recessive disorder in which there are mutation in the gene which encode glucocerebrosidase so as this gene is not present glucocerebrosidase uh, it is responsible for breakdown of glucocerebrosides and therefore they are deposited in the body in various uh, cells and therefore this uh, is the disorder so what is the pathology behind it so glucocerebrosides are actually formed from the catabolism of glycolipids of the cell membranes of different wbcs and red cells okay from the red cells the leukocytes the cell membranes uh, we get the glucocerebrosides and these are to be uh, broken down broken down by glucocerebrosidase which is defective in case of your uh, gaucher's disease so therefore the glucocerebroside will now accumulate in various phagocytes various macrophages of various organs such as your liver your bone marrow also it is not only the storage which is the problem uh, because the storage takes place in the macrophages these macrophages will get activated and will also secrete various cytokines such as interleukin 1 interleukin 6 tumor necrosis factor and this will again cause the damage now going to the types there are various type of the gaucher's disease okay depending upon the uh whether the disease is acute or chronic whether the cns is involved or not involved okay so going to the first type now this type is the most common variety okay it is so common that around 99% of the cases fall under luckily fall under this category this is the chronic non neuropathic form so as the name suggests the disease is chronic that is the patient uh the disease uh, is uh, taking place during adulthood and it's chronic in nature and also it is non neuropathic that is there is no cns involvement whatsoever in this case so in this what happens is the storage of the glucocerebrosides will be limited to the mononuclear phagocytes okay it will be uh, uh, present in the phagocytes and will not involve the brain Uh, the things which will be involved are splenic spleen will be involved will be splenomegaly present in these patients you will have the skeletal involvement present so these will be involved uh, because uh, this uh, disease in this the glucocerebrosite days level they are not very low okay they are low but they are not undetectable and this is a, a non neuropathic form here therefore the longevity of the person is shortened but the death uh occurs late okay so going to the type 2 now type 2 one is the more serious form it is acute infantile neuropathic gaucher's disease okay so as the name suggests it involves the infant and it leads to death of the person at very early age it is acute form and it is a neuropathic form that is there is cns involvement seen so here there is no detectable glucocerebrosidase activity in the tissues you will see hepatosplenomegaly you will see the skeletal disorder but along with that the thing which is uh, uh, is there is the progressive cns involvement and this leads to the death of the person at a early age now the type 3 the last type is the variety which is intermediate between the 1 and 2 it is chronic okay no doubt about that but it is neurological variant also that means the person will have systemic involvement along with cns disease but this cns disease is beginning at adolescence or early childhood ad uh, early adulthood sorry okay so this is intermediate okay now going to the what is the uh, classical cells which we see in gaucher's disease okay so uh, classical cells which are seen which are diagnostic of the disease are the gaucher cells okay for the diagnosis if we want to make a diagnosis of the person uh, of the gaucher disease first is to check the enzyme level the glucocerebrosidase level so if they are lower that means there is a possibility of a gaucher disease second is presence of gaucher cells so these what are the gaucher cells actually they are 
actually the macrophages or the dif distended phagocytic cells which are found in case of spleen in case of liver bone marrow lymph node tonsils thymus and pear patches okay so these are just distended phagocytic cells in which there is deposition of your glucocerebrosides so here you can see a beautiful picture of a gaseous cell so you can see uh, it has cert in the cytoplasm it has a certain appearance to the cytoplasm this appearance uh, in which the cytoplasm kind of appears like a crumpled tissue paper okay if you take a tissue paper and crumple it it looks like that so this uh, is very classical of your gaseous cell so it will have a fibrillary type of the cytoplasm which is crumpled tissue paper like appearance and they are mostly enlarged than the normal phagocytes okay they will have a slightly larger size and will have a eccentrically placed nuclei now uh, going to the various stains which can you can do for, uh, the important stain is your past stain past stain uh, you can see it is very intensely positive okay you can see this magenta color okay this intense positivity is seen in case of uh, gaseous disease on electron microscopy if you see these cells only gaseous cells you will see actually what is deposited you will see the fibrillary cytoplasm is actually distended lysosomes which contains the stored lipid okay it is just it because it is a lysosomal storage disease okay so you can see the distended lysosomes in electron microscopy now going to the clinical features clinical feature will always depend upon the type which we are discussing the most common type is the type 1 here the symptoms and signs will appear in the adulthood mostly there will be splenomegaly your skeletal involvement and because there is splenomegaly there are certain uh, clinical features which come due to any splenomegaly okay so there are certain clinical features such as pancytopenia thrombocytopenia because there is spleen is active it will consume more cells and because it is uh, it is leading to expansion of the marrow space there will be pathological fractures and bone pain these a person the good thing is it is a most common form and it the disease is always progressive in the adulthood and therefore gives a long life to the person going to the type 2 and 3 here there it is dominated by the cns involvement so there will be uh, clinical features such as convulsions mental deterioration and other organs are simultaneously being involved so going to lastly what is the treatment in this case treatment in this case firstly is the replacement therapy with the recombinant enzymes that is replaced with the glucocerebrosidase from outside and this is the mainstay of the treatment this is a expensive treatment okay so going to second that is the allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation this is a curative uh, treatment but again expensive then other things which are being explored is substrate reduction therapy okay they don't allow the glucocerebrosidase to be for a uh, glucocerebrosides to be formed so this is also being evaluated so this is uh, the basics of the gaucher's disease do like share subscribe to this channel if you like these types of video it will mean a lot thanks for watching this video thank you